motion to open the meeting. Uh, second. Motion to uh, open the meeting. Uh, I'll second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, no, I thought it's on email. One said he was planning on like an Yeah, hold on. Maybe he got hold of. Hello. Oh, to the library? Yeah, we're we're at the library. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. All right. Um Okay. We're good. All right, so um, tonight's agenda, we do not have any cases. Um, there are no historical commission cases and there are no district cases. Tonight's agenda is to look at the current guidelines and make some um, improvements to the language, stuff that doesn't, is, doesn't read very clearly, try to get it more clear. Um, and so that's the purpose of tonight. And this is a, a first go at this, and we said this would be our summer project. So what I did tonight on this package is do the, a framework, if you will. So your resources are the current guidelines that are available on the Rowley Town website. And then my, what I'm saying, and I went through each thing and in bold in here is what my proposal, adding the language for my proposal. We have some additions to the forum. forum. <laughs> We're already on. We've already started. So we have, there's a seat here and there's a seat there open. Where do you want to sit? Uh, I'll stretch out there. Okay. okay. Hi, Holly. Thank you. So tonight, I'll just go over again for you guys. So in the highlighted orange, this is my first draft of the new proposed language for the guidelines. And this is the one that we currently have that's on our website. So what I thought we'd do is just kind of go side by side with because it looks like this. I didn't make it fancy like that, but it, it reads like this. So in bold is the proposed. Um, some of the resources that you have in front of you are district guidelines from um, the town of Swampscott. There's the town of Wenham. Um, I also looked at the town of Acton. I looked at the town of Framingham. I looked at the Hamilton, Salem, Beverly a lot of communities. We have been doing good, but the language is not as clear, mm -hmm. and it's so that's the one thing to take away from all of this. But really the way it's set out, um, other towns what I found too, was that they had the green book. Basically everything from the green book was cut and paste right on the website. I think we can do, I think we can use some of this uh, also, your resource, I made copies for you of what is in the green book, and I used some of this information, too, from the, the state of Mass. So for fences and solar panels and things like that. So um, one other thing is I found, and it's not true in every town, but Swampscott has it, and Rowley had it in the 80s, the early 80s, up until six years ago up until six years ago you would go to the building inspector and this is what you got this was a typewriter um, <laughs> rally <laughs> guidelines okay and we worked on doing this and we cleaned up this language had spelling errors grammatical you know someone just typed it up and we made this so it's always good to have, kind of go back and make changes. But this one had the uh, Secretary of uh, uh, set Standards for Rehabilitation, this one did, and we took it out. But I see that Swampscott has it and other communities have it, and I think that we need to put that back in because they are the federal guidelines. Mm -hmm. We go Fed, then we go Mass, and then we go Rowley. So it's just that uh, information that helps strengthen 
what it is that we do in preservation and rehabilitation. So that's why this, that's how it starts. Okay. So um, looking at the first one in the district guidelines under Rowley would be additions. Um, I am proposing that we add additions in bold. Additions on the main facade are discouraged. Side additions should be stepped back from the facade to reduce the impact on the general building mass. That just makes it really clear for anybody who looks at this that it just having one flat plane can be very massive and having that step back. But we have numerous examples along Main Street where this already exists. Okay. So that's a proposal. Um, moving to architectural elements and trim. Um, adding original siding materials should be retained whenever possible. Deteriorated materials should be repaired or replaced where necessary with new materials that duplicate the, duplicate the original as closely as possible. I, I, don't, I don't see that being a, I don't see that being a big thing. Um, on barns and outbuildings, uh, reading this, I felt there was something that really bothered me. So in the last part of, in Rowley Current, says generally the, con uh, the conversion of a barn to a home is discouraged within historic districts. And I don't know why that's in there. I, I think that's because I think it's possibilities for the future and I think we need to take that language out. Because if someone wants to put a unit, I'm, in a house, in a barn, and make it a living space, they should. Why well, they did that in Newbury, over yeah. the Dibbles, just over the bridge, and they sold it for over a million dollars. I totally agree. And then the, the statement should be in keeping with the character of the barn. Yeah, <clears throat> I think that sentiment should be, you know. Yeah, right? Any and silly. Any and all additions should be in keeping with the character of the barn. Okay, any? Any and all additions. Or any 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 old elements of conversion of a conversion components of conversion should be kept in character with the original. Okay, I'm gonna add that in. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Just backing up to the additions piece. Yep. I, I think you're absolutely spot on in terms of the setbacks, but that's going to I think it's going to lend itself to needing some sort of a guideline in terms of setback. You know. It's a sideline issue. That's really what you're so talking about. So I could put um, um, a step back. Um, we're not talking. We're talking maybe a um, you know foot or two, but not. You're it's, not talking it, about something you feel like you find in, in, with the Back Bay Commission, where you've got a step back on the third floor from the um, along the main. You know where you're actually. You're not talking about that. You're just talking about. Yeah, creating a, a shadow line. In fact, you know what, Len? If memory serves, on 89 Main Street, we have, oh, which is right over there, you were the one. They had we had a big proposal to come through um, for a new addition, and you were the one who said, "You know what? I don't want this thing to be one massive plane. Step it back, you know, 18 inches a foot, so that we have a shadow line and that there's." Some so, depth. So, I, so define that's, that for that, me. So that's different. You should, you know, the, why, what is the reason for a setback? It's basically, to, you, I don't know if you say shadow line, whether that's going to see two. I don't know. What is what is that? Just, to be, I would say to break to break up the elevation. You know, break up the side. Yeah. Right, well, you know, you, the you, you could use the word monolithic, but that's probably not necessary. Yeah, I want it to be just really yeah, simple I would just and say, clear. I would say to break down the, the line. You know, to, it's, it's, it's clearly the kind of thing which people are going to have to come to us and then we have to either mark up drawings or do something. Yeah, different. but just to, to say, just to <coughs> drive home the point that it's not this, it shouldn't be this big wall. Right. It should be some interest. Um, mm -hmm. And there's numerous examples, again, on Main Street where this exists. Do you have to say anything about the materials matching the so, facade on that situation, too? So I didn't there, but I do in other, in other places. It's, it's mentioned quite a bit mm -hmm. about the materials. Okay, so break up the facade and then mention um, 
matching the quality of the yeah I would think the same language you're using on the next section yeah yep okay Okay. <coughs> the integrity of materials, and then I kind of just re I just use this a lot. Original siding, or retain whenever possible. Da -da -da -da. There's a couple of things yeah. that are, they're repetitive, but it really drives it home. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Um, chimneys. Um, new chimneys should maintain original ornamental details. That was never in there. So if it's gonna ha if you're gonna be taking one down and you're gonna be replacing it, it should match what was there before. It, you know. Well, that's what we did with the gauge building. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But it wasn't stated. So now we're just stating it. <coughs> yeah, because Ken Hamilton agreed with us. Right. Exactly. <coughs> Okay, um, decks. So, decks, there was a lot in the guideline from, um, not from the state so much, but Hamilton, uh, Wenham and in Swampscott, and these are for you guys to take home. And this, I think, uh, applies to the annex, because we're talking about, um, oh, no, not the annex. Uh, um, well, kind of does. We're here adding decks and all elements, flooring, bolsters, railings, and skirting should be installed that don't alter the historical significance of the building, bolsters, ra railings, skirting, and all other vertical elements should be wood or composite materials that are indistinguishable from natural or traditional materials. Instead of saying that don't alter, I'd say maintain or maintain the integrity. Or you know, don't alter, just maintain. How about that? Maintain the integrity, historical integrity of the building. Should be installed to maintain. To maintain. The historical, or I, I won't say significance. I say integrity. Historical integrity. integrity yep. Okay. I'll be discussing this next meeting. Uh, you're <laughs> no, Linda wants to do something with some off her little shop. So let's put like. But we never really, we never really got into it. Just said that careful siding at the back of the house, planting, this, screening. This will be actually good because yeah. because you can see it from the street, and all that fun stuff. And yeah. We're, just, we're still thinking. We're still throwing a lot of ideas around. So this will be. Okay. So now you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, demolition, adding that. The town of Rowley does have a demol de demolition delay bylaw for structures of historical or architectural significance mm -hmm. and adding for more information, see the general bylaws of the town of Rowley without getting into it's so many pages. Without adding that, they can go for more information to mm -hmm. read about it. Um, I don't. I don't know necessarily know that it's. We have it. Um, we have only enacted it once. It. Is, oh, I should add that it's nine months. It's a nine-month delay. Really? And for more information, um, which those are online on the town website, the general bylaw. How does that work? I mean, you basically. Is a nine month waiting period? Yeah, so a demo delay by lot for the town of Rowley is for any structure. If you go to fill a building permit and a structure is over 75 years old and it's in the town of Rowley, in the town, not just the district, okay, in the town. Maybe it's an old barn. Um, uh, it was Daniels Road. That's the one we enacted it on. It was like the other hay, 1700s English style hay barn. English hay barn, yeah. And um, the homeowners wanted to take the barn down, and this commission said, okay, well, we're going to go to Tunnel Delay, and we're going to look at the requirements. What does it mean? And we have to, what has to happen, the criteria is, is the structure of historical importance, and there's a whole bunch of things it needs to meet, or is the structure of architectural importance and 
it has to meet portraying the environment of a group of people in, a, in an era of history characterized by distinctive architectural style, da 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 da, there's all these little things. Or does it have geographic Im importance? Does the structure meet the criteria of that? Um, the site of uh, a relevant square, a park, something distinctive, the structure is unique to its location, its physical characteristics. So in order to invoke the demo delay bylaw, the structure in question needs to meet this criteria. This board needs to decide whether it meets that criteria. Is that offset if there are health reasons, health or right. safety issues? Meaning how? If you if delaying a building for demolition of a building of nine months where there are health hazards because they're they pose a, a safety threat, mm -hmm. how does that? I yeah. can just see so, people coming so, and saying, "Oh, well, yeah." Well, it already it's happened, so it's that's a. They just want to tear the building down. Yeah, I've heard of basically because they want to do something else. Yeah, right. But, 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 but by keeping it, certain times, keeping a building up in a certain area is going to pose a, a safety mm -hmm. threat. Well, that's <coughs> for the commission. To yeah, that's for us to. to but is there a language there that talks about? Because I can see There's people coming and saying. And saying that, and if there's nothing stated about it, then we've got to make some sort of well, subjective. Well, there's there's reading. some. So I'm not. The building inspector and town government need to decide whether or not it's um, condemned. If it's condemned, that's a whole different ball of wax. And there's language that kind of mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Here, good. But if it's if it's condemned, then then there's nothing that can happen. Um, but if it is not condemned and it's structurally viable. And it can have an alternative life. Mm -hmm. Without the nine months, it's the hope that somebody would do something different with it, like move it, like your school building yeah. that you moved. Well, right? there's, a, there's a building right across the street from me that's slowly coming down, and it's an old barn. It's a, I always stare at it. I'm like, it's a shame. It's you like, should <coughs> move it. I know, but you I'm like, get it. What, it's almost like they're, so, they're just letting it. Good question, Len. And if it's structurally viable and it's historic and it meets these criteria, this commission has the ability to enact a demo delay bylaw for nine months, meaning there can be no work done for nine months and in hopes that there could be a conversation that somebody would do okay. something Thanks different with it. Yeah. Would yeah. It would delay the, the... Is that a machine shop? Yeah, so if... No, there's that machine shop, but then there's... The, it's 51 Main Street, and there's a barn that belongs to 51 Main Street. Oh. That if you come, yeah, I know. You can start seeing the roof start and mm -hmm. like go in, and it's like there's a, you know, in a perfect world if you could move that somewhere, or if someone bought that yeah. property and said, hey, I'm gonna save the barn and make a second unit out of it. Would right. Be, well, would make I think sense, but taking that language out, but I want to just make <coughs> sure that the building inspector agrees with that. But yeah. I think it's it should. We should be looking at yeah. alternatives. I don't want to go off the reservation, but it's yeah. almost like there should be some way to save it before it does Absolutely. go to, because if someone just says, I own it, and I just want to see it fall to, fall to the ground. And then Is there ever a requirement to rebuild if they want to demolish a structure? That's yeah, so here um, in the current language, yeah. it does say that the commission may require that a new structure replicating the original be built in the place of the demolished structure if it's a valid, if it is value, if its value is significant to the district and the streetscape. How is that determined? It just goes through a review. So let's say, let's just say for the purposes of, you know, let's just say the house across the street, which just got painted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they come in, they want to tear it down. I mean, that house is, its presence to the streetscape, it's significance to Rowley, you know, um, it's would be a total loss. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it's full of, it's not repairable, mm -hmm. you know, the frame is gone, I don't know, let's just, let's just say it's like the worst situation you could ever, ever have. We, this commission could say, you know, look, it's horrible what's happened to your house, it's disrepair, you know, we want to rebuild half of it or whatever, it needs to look exactly like it is now. Okay. Yep. That's what this is basically um, replicating the original to be built in the place of what was taken down. Okay. 
not to go way off the reservation, oh but, my God. <laughs> but, but could conservation ever step in to help, like say that scenario, could conservation, um, preservation, could they ever, say if, if say a landmark property got damaged, would that ever be, could someone go back and say, I can't afford, I need R and yeah. I don't know. Or low in, or low I'm sure or there's no precedent. I'm sure there's precedent. Yeah, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Try. No, but if it was a legit, you I know, mean, a gem, I don't know. I mean, that that's a huge. Hopefully, hopefully we never cross that bridge. Yeah, well, you know, no, we, you, we you have. We'll see it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. have resources. You know, we'll yeah. call the state or national historic if we have to, to get you know, help with that, but that's really nothing that I've ever encountered. Please, don't let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> when you brought it up, I'm not that. Don't stop. <laughs> okay, so, so you know what, for the essence of time, I'm going to just hit the big ones. You guys can write me your little notes if you want to change the language, and then I can do that. Do you so know, do you, is this in a word doc? I have it. I can send it to you and in a word, and then just put it in red in your you, edits. Yeah. Okay. Along with my bold. That's fine. Okay. Just have so, as, as words and everyone can. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Everyone can just add to what they think. So, but for energy alternatives, that's what we have in Rowley. That's the current. That's what we call it, which wasn't bad, but it didn't really include solar panels. And I think that's something we need to um, include. And this language is a combination. This language came from the state. Solar panels include both photovoltaic and domestic hot water heaters. Accommodating modern equipment, including solar panels, should be done in a way to minimize visibility from public ways. This that's is a big part of it. That's a big part of it. This is typically accomplished by locating the panels on rear L's subordinate wings, secondary massing, accessory outbuildings, or on a freestanding array. Installing panels behind dormers, chimneys, oh, parapets, is important so that the panels do not obscure character-defining features. The commission will consider uh, the following. Flush to roof mounting, minimum number of panels or size relative to the roof area, color of the frames and panels to blend with the color of the roof, uh, relative, effect to, uh, relative effect to the period of the dwelling. So if it's a 1600s house, this is really going to be a huge consideration for us, right? Um, location and geometry relative to the roof area, solar panels visible from a public way will generally be discouraged. So have we had instances where people have come and said that the orientation yeah. of the roof is such that I have to spot it in order for it to really work. It's visibility will be compromised. What do you do in that case? It's, it's, um, they can do like the open door ring. They can put yeah. it out in the back, yeah. Oh, no, I was standing. In a freestanding array. So should there be language there that talks about, you know, um, alternative or, anyway. Yeah, it's just it says it says it here. It says um, accessory outbuilding. So this is typically accomplished by locating the panels on rear L's, subordinate wings, secondary massings, as out, accessory outbuildings, so that could be a barn on the property or something mm -hmm. ad, like that. So you say you're, you're giving options in the case where they have to spot it in order to make sense. Yeah, yeah. there isn't an option though. That. Well, there would be because you could do it in the yard. You could do a garden structure, yeah. an, uh, uh, an array, a trellis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was actually set away, you don't seem to be noticing. Yeah. There's um, an, and what's nice about the trellis or um, a garden array is that it would be in the rear and not visible by a public way. The main point here is the solar panels are allowed mm -hmm. in the historic district, but they are not visible from a public way. They're not allowable. They're visible from public way. And that language existed even in the old 1980s typewriter version. So that's nothing new. This I thought was great because it really defines it gives you the options of where to put it. Um, windmills. Um, that would be cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Stephen. So adding. So Don Quixote. <laughs> adding under energy alternatives, adding solar panel, more defined solar panel language. And again, I can continue to work on this, but this was um, cut and paste from the state. 
Got it. Um, right, windmills? Windmills did not come from the state. Windmills came from Wenham. This was Wen Wenham's language. So I I'll, I feel like um, I wanted to say something. You mean that you're talking about the ones in Ipswich? The big ones, the turbines. Right. Yeah. Well, but hmm. then, but then, well, wait a minute. So, so I, I kind of like, hmm. Then there's residential scale wind turbine, not a windmill, that are available. I kind of feel like right place. <laughs> as we say, right plant, right place. But um, if it wasn't viewable and it was yeah. rather small, as I feel like it needs to be like, as technology improves over the, the coming years, the commission may yeah. entertain a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. I feel like we need to have something. So if it's not visible. If it's then, not visible. Didn't they just have, didn't farmers just have like small right. ones right. that they would put on top of barns? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got a big one on that. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get that? You could buy it. You didn't notice? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, the old pictures show a, a big window up there. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was for, for yeah. water. It uh -huh. drew yeah. water. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, if it's utilitarian, it's I, one thing. I but know. if it's just for show, it's quite another. Right. You, you want to put a line here that says, you know, appropriate exceptions will be considered or something to that Something to that effect, but almost to the point where, you know, as, as an energy alternative, you know, we're seeing things coming out of Europe that are teeny tiny. Right, that's what I'm saying. Could be, uh, at this point to say a flat out no, I mm -hmm. think is in, it's not mm -hmm. responsible of us. Mm -hmm. But when you say it will generally be considered appropriate, there's more no than there is maybe. Right, so, <laughs> so help me, so help me fix well, this. Well, I would say sentence that you said for the solar panel, so just construction, installation of windmills visible from a public way will generally be discouraged. Okay. Just use the same language, but it still leaves a little opening if it's not. Yeah, so it visible. gives them the, the, the feeling that they can come to us and right. they have good reason and they can suggest something that makes sense. As, the, so as the technologies change, you know, because, <coughs> you know, we'll have this done. I don't know when we'll all be able to have time to do this again in the next three or five years. Things are changing so quickly. There may right. be stuff that actually we don't even see that are very helpful right. to people. So right. to just flat out say no, I don't think is right. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I think they're appropriate at a miniature golf course. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pond. It is a miniature golf course. Historically appropriate. Only when little right. kids are playing. <laughs> well, wow, but the dinosaur in Little One became an issue. It's true, yeah, actually. It's still there. It's um, a landmark. Adding, uh, so on exterior, uh, exterior equipment, there was a thing about septic system vent pipes, but it wasn't defined, but just saying that. Um, other towns say septic vent pipes should be placed in a remote location as far as possible from the public way and screen with vegetation and consider using a dark colored short pipe to be to the more common white PVC gooseneck type. <coughs> I don't know. Th there was more information here about modern equipment from Swampscott if you want to quickly look at it. Um, they talk about satellite dishes. Um, and it's under M, Modern Equipment. <coughs> I want to get your opinion if it's too, if this is too prescriptive, but it says um, mechanical equipment located outside a building and visible <coughs> from public way, including antennas, cellular towers, satellite dishes, propane, and other tanks, dumpsters, utility meters, Alarm systems, HVAC, HVAC equipment, including air conditioners, heating units, ducts, piping, fan, um, and so on. Do you think that's, that's like just too much? Why don't you just say, I mean, what, the one, the one uh, modern equipment should be in general and small and inconspicuous as possible. Okay. Well, I want this to lead. Okay. Because that really sets the tone about what you're what you're thinking about. I okay. Think. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm on page twelve of Swampscape. And in fact, Sarah, the rest of that paragraph looks pretty good too. 
All modern equipment should be installed in locations which create the least disturbances to our own plants in the building yep. and allow the least additional structural alterations and are screened, hidden, or otherwise shielded from view. I mean, that's a, that's a good cover. Okay, super. Mm -hmm. I didn't, it got, it got wordy, that's why yeah, I put the note, do, should I do that? I one paragraph, is kind of mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, okay. But it really does cover so many things. Yeah, it just says yeah, it right there. Right. So it, it gives us some areas to uh, hang our hat on, too, so they put something really hot and terrible. Well, I think they probably put so much in all this stuff just so someone say, I didn't see propane tanks in there or something like, you know. Right, that's right. For every time you find oh, yeah. something, they, there are three others they'll find that you have oh, yeah. figured to find. She didn't mention that. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, so fences. Uh, That's a hot one. We had to go there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the bold is from the state. That's the state language. Um, ours, our language from what is right now says, you know, it's got it's more of a story. It's you know, fences can be erected for utilitarian aesthetic reasons. There's significant architectural features. Talks about being designed by Samuel McIntyre, architecturally important. Da, 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 da. It's like a story. It's not prescriptive. Right. So the the language from the state of Massachusetts, right from there, I just used theirs, and then I added extra language on the bottom. So. Most, so it reads, most fences in local historic districts are made of wood. However, other materials such as iron and steel can be found in some districts. Such fences can be character defining features to local historic districts and removal is not appropriate. However, historic fences, particularly wood fences, may need to be repaired or replaced from time to time. Any replacement should match the historic fence in material and design. New fences at the facade or near public way should be should not be so tall that they block the visibility of historic buildings. There may be other site locations where tall fences are appropriate to the district. <coughs> Modern materials such as plastic, steel, are really inappropriate fence materials in local his historic <coughs> districts. It says really appropriate. Yeah, it yeah. says oh, appropriate. Are, 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 <laughs> I think it's a are rare. Maybe yeah. not really. Are rare. <laughs> Rarely appropriate fence materials in local historic districts. Some low fences may not require a building permit. However, they still require review in most historic district bylaws and ordinances requiring a certificate before installation and removal. Then come down, vinyl, stockade, chain link, light gauge metal, and concrete block are not appropriate materials for fences and generally will not be approved. So, what do we, we don't, do we want to go? I'm thinking of our problem with our with yeah, the, with the uh, folks, and where where you know that there have been exceptions or vi not violations, but there have been the slap. Well, they're here. And they're, they're here. here. They're so do we want to take a position about the replacement of those fences that they revert to the wood? Can yeah. We, well, if can we, we can we do that. Well, I mean, it's it's vinyl stockade, chain link, light gauge metal. I don't even know what light gauge metal fencing is. And will not be approved. But oh. I, I'm, I'm a homeowner, and I have a vinyl fence. Okay. The vinyl fence breaks down. Right. It falls. Let's it, say storm it, damage. It, it storm damage, and needs mm -hmm. to be replaced. Are we going to allow them to put up another section of vinyl fence? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think we with this language, it's saying it's not appropriate. Yeah. yeah, but well, that's if, if, it's, if it's less than 50% of the fence, oh, okay. then you've got to repair it. If it's more than 50% of the fence, then you'd say, to go for it's got to go for the whole review. thing. Yeah. Then you have both for review. So the question is whether you want to plant a seed for that where you're opening a can of worms, or you want to deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis and, and then use the language for your advantage. I mean, case by I, I mean, I think yeah. we're, what we've been seeing but and what don't, I you know better, better unsaid and then just deal with it when it comes up. Yeah, but, but, but you're, you're, you're always going to get somebody like the, the, the noses up there. Yeah, well, that was unfortunate, and they were matching, right? You know, that's another thing, the matching. Yeah, they had a permit. I know, but there was a matching, so but if they already had vinyl the permit. 
Yeah, I, I know, but there was a matching that was that they said we already had it, so we were matching what was already existing, and I'm sure that that's going to be a common thread and story too. But if this commission is going to take a stand and, and not have final fence in the district, it just needs to be language. It's just we don't do it. I agree. I agree. So, well, it's always like some a session comes down and grandfathered in to put the more on. But I think, Frank, you bring up an interesting situation, the 50-50. Say it again. Well, I say, you know, if the, if the fence is destroyed or Let's say it's in disrepair, yeah. and, and, and if it's more than 50%, then it should be all done. Replaced. replaced yeah. Re all mm -hmm. replaced. I'll come under review and most likely be replaced. Well, yeah. it'd have to come under review. I would take Frank's language of 50% and say it's subject to review. Okay. <clears throat> and, um, and, and replacement will have to meet the standards established, which you're, where you're saying the vinyl stockade, blah, 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 is not accepted. So you don't have to, you don't have to, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of ducking a little bit, but you're you're basically saying it's subject to review and the must meet the standards. Okay. Okay. Uh, look, I'm gonna flush that out, and then we'll just pass it around. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Good. Okay. Um, the well, only thing. Yep. When it says stockade, are we talking like cedar stockade, or is that? Um, stockade shows oh, up. Stockade shows up in every single uh, community in Massachusetts, in Wenham, in in Swampscott. Um, I think even a wood stockade fence. It wouldn't be appropriate to see a wood stockade no, no, fence no, in the front of your house, right? It <coughs> needs to be more decorative, right? Is that what what went up across from the Bradford Tavern? Lady. Not in the district, Stephen. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that was but already. That's yeah. Okay. That's yeah. on Haverhill but, Street, yeah. not in no, the. I'm just thinking yeah. of stock. I'm, right. no, I'm just thinking of stock. But not appropriate if it was in the district, not yeah. appropriate. Yeah. It's basically those pointed little flats, right? Yeah. 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 Ugly. Um, so but then it's on. Um, <laughs> so moving on to uh, foundation, all I added was. So this, this thing was like exposed portion of a foundation of a new building. If concrete or concrete block sh should be brick or stone faced. And I, Frank has always said, put shrubs, <laughs> put vegetation up. Like we shouldn't have to see that thing sticking out of yeah, the ground like that. So I am adding to include vegetation as foundation planting. All right. Um, nothing, um, nothing big on gutters and downspouts, that was pretty much similar. And the state language says the commission will consider composite materials in a true wood gutter profile. Um, question is landscaping. This commission and many commissions, actually pretty much all commissions, don't review landscaping um, as per the, um, the general 40C, the general laws. Um, however, I can put put in the state language, and it talks about landscaping is exempt for review. However, I think I would like to put one thing in, and and it's because it's happened to this board, and it happened to this board in the last year, and it was a neighborhood request, and that was on Central Street. The developer came in across from Country Gardens and put in all those new houses. Mm -hmm. And the one thing we said was to maintain those trees, the maple trees, to have the mm -hmm. streetscape. Thank God we did because they took every single freaking tree down in that entire thing. And the only thing really is that the trees were maintained and we made a big thing. And the, and the neighbors, really maple, sure. mm -hmm. the neighbors really really fought for the trees. So I'd like to add some type of a language. Don't know if this is correct yet, but um, 
The RHDC uh, would not be favorable towards tree, remo tree removal where the trees have become a character defining feature of, a, of the streetscape. Okay. Something to that effect because that was, no. um, and it was, I mean, uh, that in right. particular, and it, it just, I glanced over and I said, no, we have had an experience with this. So mm -hmm. I think it should be. So you're not referring to the better Hill Road development? Yeah, yeah that's the, 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 the corner. The, oh, the, the corner. We're, we're yeah. always maintained yeah. is that edge. And the everything only, else has been clear yeah, it's cut. all clear cut. It's yeah. all clear cut, and yeah. the only thing, and we put it in yeah. the in our certificate, in our write up, yeah. that the that yeah. those trees were to be maintained. Now, yeah. you no, know, I'm reading this, and it's like a little out of our purview. However, mm -hmm. I'm saying, and I think what they're saying, is that. Um, um, the commissions may allow certain things for properly screened with landscape and da 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 all this stuff. But I'm saying in that situation, this board has had a personal experience with it, and if those trees were gone, can you imagine what that would look like right now? I think we. I'll take a pass. But I think you should also add language talks about. Um, Enhancing privacy. I mean, you know, some give a reason besides just the, the character. You know, it's, it's yeah. a sound attenuation. It's it's a it's yeah. it's privacy. You know, there are there are physical, there are actual. You know, besides aesthetic, because that's really what you get to. There are issues there of sound and privacy, and we should kind of. I'll take a pass at adding language. It kind of. Okay. There's, there's a real. There's a yeah. good sound reason for it. Right. And we could also say that just the value that trees add to not only the community but to your own personal value of your property. Mm -hmm. you know? It's it's a it's an encouragement. It's, it's not a it's not a direct order because yeah. we don't really yeah. have the you know, like that, I'm really good to see. I want to put a house there. <laughs> that, that's what value. it gets down to. Yeah. I mean, a quality tree yeah, I mean, yeah. is not yeah. worth losing. Definitely not. Well, you know, you talk about, and you could talk about historic <laughs> significance of, uh, of, you know, there are a couple of things. I okay, think, so I think bullet we put the meat there. on the bones there in terms okay. of what, what we're talking about. I appreciate about. it, and I'm glad you're as enthusiastic as I am about it, because I think I wouldn't have cared if it this didn't happen to this board. Um, lighting, the thing that I'm adding here, which I think makes sense, is the sodium vapor, metal halide, neon light should not be used. And encourage energy efficient lighting such as LEDs, um, but the color of the temperature should be equivalent to a warm incandescent light. Good. I think that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is. All these, the sodium and the metal, they're like on the way out. Yeah, they're on the way out, anyways, but um, there is a little bit more to that, and you could look at the Swamp Scott, but it gets into the box, box lights, oh. and. Mm, like that just seems very building. commercial. Yeah. I don't think we have. Yeah. No. All right. But we have that. Okay. That was the first pass. People put them in their driveways for, like, say that it's a dual, two-person property or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes like a commercial feel to it. Some of these new lights that the light department has put up are awful bright. Yeah. I mean, because they put one over our mailbox, and we can read our mail at night. Right? <laughs> right. Do we have anything about retaining? You figure out what you want to bring in. Right? Original fixtures. So, Bill, leave it. Oh yes. Have songs that has. Um, so, oh, so tell original me. light fixtures can be important in rare architectural features, um, contributing to the historical resource value. Okay, and that's <clears throat> encouraging retaining those. Okay. And I the way you on the electrical end is. Sometimes <laughs> to ref to refix that feature, right. it's lost its UL right. stamp. Right. It's, it, okay. It's a, it's it's that way to argument. If possible, to retain positive, like, original and then to match with a yeah matching match fish. as close as possible mm -hmm. to original fixture. Because I I agree with it all. Yeah, it says um, deteriorated or missing elements should be replaced with like materials. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So Rowley has a section where it's just called materials. So this is John's favorite. 
So we talk, so Rally currently says the materials historically used in construction are wood, glass, brick, stone. These are traditional materials that are, that would be appropriate when building or renovating in historic districts. Many new synthetic building products are revolutionizing, revolutionizing the building trades. And I'm writing, however, not all new products are appropriate in historic district. For example, synthetic or imitation materials such as vinyl and aluminum, um, uh, vinyl and aluminum. Then I want to say window siding and railing systems are not appropriate and will not um, and will not normally be approved. I want to say vinyl and aluminum window siding and railing. That's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. Such mm -hmm. as vinyl and aluminum. So we'll get rid of that window siding and railing systems. However, on this next line, which I think is really important, new materials such as paintable composite materials that are indistinguishable from natural traditional products, the commission will consider their use by a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. And that I think is our PVC, Everlast, yeah. Siding, that's Borel. our Borel, that's um, Hardy Plank, that's mm -hmm. everything, we're approving it, I think we should say we will. Now I would start the sentence, uh, Sarah said, the commission will consider new materials, is that leaving at the end? The Commission will consider new materials such as paintable composite materials and in the same proof for natural material products. Okay. On case by case basis. Got it. Thanks, Len. <coughs> I'm going to breeze through and come down to um, yeah. I think the end, which is. I, I want to. Go to a secondary egress. Can I just, uh, on, yeah. a, a new construction I, where you're, I think it's something we actually, have, you said appropriate, I put, I put appropriate and accurately scaled. You know, we've looked at, we, I remember looking at some windows that we clearly, Oh yes. the dormer windows, were, yes. were, they were too small and so, right. so appropriate and accurately because we could tell they weren't accurately drawn. Right. So in the so I didn't go into too too much detail about this because in the requirements on the checklist on the front it says they're a quarter scale or the smallest could be eighth inch scale but appropriate scale and appropriate and accurate. accurate scale in other words they can show something which clearly is you know we can with my scale I can measure right. accurately scaled architectural drawings site plans diagrams photographs will be required for the design, design review process okay. Um, I want to go, just because of time, I want to go to something that I think, I think we need help on, um, and that's secondary egress, um, because they don't talk about it in the state. We well, would think that they would, but they don't. There's no reference, and I got this from Swampscott. So Rowley says in the cases where the building code requires a secondary maintenance of egress, the egress should be installed within the building. Great. If the space constraints preclude interior installation, installation, the secondary means of egress should be installed so as to be invisible from the public way whenever possible. Okay, we can work with that. Mm -hmm. But they don't talk about, Rowley doesn't talk about handicap accessibility, and I think we should have it in there. Um, and I don't know... Um, it says all public buildings um, should be handicap accessible. Okay, but what if you have a wheelchair in your regular house and, and you, you, you know, need a ramp? I don't think it should just say all public buildings. Mm -hmm. It should just say, like, you know, all public buildings. Mm -hmm. I don't know, frame that for me because that's my concern is that, yeah, okay, all public buildings are required to be handicap accessible. I would but, say buildings. Okay. Yeah. But it's not. Oh, just buildings? Yeah, saying historic, can I say, so in other words, it, you're not distinguishing between, but you're... you're all thinking. buildings must be handicapped. But not all buildings yeah. are, yeah. so, um, right, they don't have to be. But if you had an accident and you, you wanted to have a, a, it's temporary, it would be a temporary ramp in front of your house. And you wouldn't, still, you wouldn't allow them to do a, a temporary... Of course we would. I mean... It's, oh, it's, it's, I just, removed. Yeah, it's, it's, rent, I just think we ramp, didn't have no. to have some kind of defining language because yeah. it's never been addressed. What if it was built as permanent? What if it was... 
Yeah, what is, well, what is temporary? So it needs to be defined. Is it 12 months? Because if it's over 12 months and somebody well, has a debilitating disease, it could be 30 years. Yeah, no, but if it's a, a, like if it's a wood ramp, yeah. it can all be disassembled True. at some point. Right. For someone they have a miracle and they get walking again. Oh, or whatever. But I think I think it's something we should we should define. Um, but as far as ripping uh, an antique house apart to make a big giant cement ramp, might not be. Right. We would definitely. Be willing to put a ramp, but it can't be this giant cement one. Okay. That's so, so that would um, I mean, like residential language to this. So it's it needs just really public. Right, it is public, and we don't really have situations. Yeah. Um, maybe over here, downtown, the store, but I think yeah, it's. It's all right if you're driving around the neighborhood. You can see they even make aluminum ones that kind of bolt together. I right? know. And you, and you know that, I mean, and you know that at some point it can be disassembled. And right, it's temporary, yeah. and, you know, but mm -hmm. I and think... that would be case by case, if someone said, I get... Well, I think, I think there needs to be, so um, while causing the least impact on historic district or historic building's character and facade. <coughs> yeah, it seems tricky, just how many access points would there really be? Front door or back door? Yeah. How accessible a back door would be? I don't know. But I think that we need to work on this. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I would just say you have a single means of you You like this to be a single. So you have one. Yeah. You're not going to have, you're not going to necessarily conform the fire code, but you have one. You know, right? I mean, the fire, the code doesn't say you have to have two means of handicap egress. No, oh, you yeah. have to, no, there's building codes that require a second means of egress. Right, but only one ramp. You know, oh, right, 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 right. Yes, correct. Okay, so more, a little bit more work on that. Um, That's a tough one. It is a tough one, but I think we need to, I think it need, we need to spell it out. Um, so then on siding, um, you'll see, um, I, there's a lot of good information about, um, Rowley says, uh, clapboards applied to additions should be matched to the original building. Vinyl or aluminum, which literally, I love how this is, <laughs> which literally covers up distinctive um, surfaces and features of older buildings, will not be approved. Solid PVC or fiber cement pe um, materials that match the appearance, profile, and detail of wood siding and trim will be considered by the commission. All original or architecturally significant trim boards, corner boards, rakes, I don't know what reeky is, <laughs> freezes, cornices, brackets, uh, and other decorative or structural elements of the building facade should be retained and restored where possible. Where replacement is necessary due to deterioration, the replacement should match the existing size, profile, and design. Mm -hmm. A lot of houses, what they'll do is it'll be clapboard on the main house, and then mm -hmm. the addition will be shingled. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. Yeah. Because shingle siding is not appropriate for every style house, but siding applied in an, an unusual design patterns is discouraged. <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> what I'm now for you is a sunburst. <laughs> what about a clover leaf? Some verse. <laughs> um, okay. I, I don't know. I didn't think we should re get rid of it. I, I, I'm assuming it's that some verse. Okay. You should say example like some verse. <laughs> <laughs> some verse from the 70s. Isn't that like kind of Victorian though? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, if it's decorative shingles, yeah. I mean, I think you can tell the difference. Yeah. Uh, storm windows, we, that's, that language stays. Uh, windows, added windows in the back. Um, the replacement of a composite or, um, if replacement of a window is necessary, the replacement should be of a composite or metal clad window with SDLs. I added that, simulated to violate. We're asking people now to do it. Painting the historic profiles and details. Um, tinted or reflective glass is not appropriate. 
I really, I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing this in a lot of district guidelines. You know that blue glass? You know, the low E glass? Yeah. Uh -huh. You see it, and they, it's very, very clear in the end, pretty much. Um, now, the state language doesn't, doesn't uh, do it, but um, a lot of other small towns have that tinted or heat reflective glass, not appropriate. And then I think this is important, so this is good. So the use of flat mutton grills, grids between insulating glass panes or behind the glass will not be approved. I think it says munition. Yeah. Well, whatever. Okay. You guys <laughs> are, I'm writing so fast. Fire away. <laughs> so first draft, but I, I, good, good. I, I think it's a little tighter. Um, I'm really, for, for our purposes, I think it needs to be way more specific. Mm -hmm. I think we should have some photographs and take pictures of some of the things that we should take a look at, like we're doing a landscape and we'll show that abomination with a big X through it. No. We'll look at that pool over on uh, Bradford. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not, gonna, we're not in the business of shaming anyone. Do and don't. That's right. Um, do not so do that. I will, I will, I will, I um, will, I'll d make your edits and then send you the, the live document and then you guys can go through it over the next whatever. You want to send back to you or just send it around to everyone? And then I just think if we send all, then if you put your edits in red, then we'll know that that's an edit. Um, so thank you for your cooperation on that. I appreciate it. And one last thing for tonight. Can we keep this other stuff? Yeah, problems. those are your references. So that's a, how you know where I've been getting my information from. Okay, cool. Um, so one thing I want to leave you with is the signs, the district signs. So a couple of things. The sign proposal that we worked on or you saw last month, I haven't had a chance to hook up with the sign guy. He has a few suggestions for me. Um, that I need to sit with him and, and go over materials. He's, he's brought up some things and he also has, a, I think he has a concern about the image. So I want to know what, what he's thinking before I can even present to you. So I'm just, it's a little on hold, but whatever I get, and it's because we, I think it's perfectly fine if, if if we can add that, if I make the tweaks or changes, we can have a design discussion. Mm -hmm. And no final decisions we made, just revisions for your for your view, and maybe we can talk about it at the public meeting next month. Mm -hmm. um, I also received, um, this is the second one that I've gotten, is a plaque request for a house plaque. So I went and I saw Karen, O'Donnell for CPC and with a little bit of research she was able to find that we do have we do have the money for this but I need to go to CPC and reenact that line item money and I have to find a sign maker and get this program up and running again but it's it's going to happen it's a 50-50. We pay, town pays 50, uh, the homeowner will pay 50, but though, you know, it used to be $40 and $40, a total of $80 for the sign. That was 10 years ago. I think things are way different now. And I probably, there's no specification, so I think I have to draw a specification to give to a sign maker, so that way, um, my yeah, yeah, and I might. I'm gonna need a. That I've actually reduplicated. Stuck here. Yeah, stuck here. Yeah, stuck here. Yeah. We're almost done. Um, and so I'm gonna. I may come over and take a picture so I can measure what your sign looks like and whatever. So more to come on that. And the last thing is on the the sign. Our district sign is. I found this image. I think if it was in color, it could be really cool on the sign mm -hmm. because it's historic and I just don't know how to make it that way. I'm, I'm working on it. Because it's the historic marsh and we want to highlight yeah. the marsh. 
Uh, maybe not the boat, but the the yeah. the water, the marsh, and yeah. the hay, the hay stack, or the hay mows. Yeah, but I, I, and I think there's some. I think if you, there are there are. I kind of draw there, it. But but and there are there are views that you can capture along one A. I know. Or along one, looking to the right, that are incredible. You just even have that as an image. You know. I know. It doesn't have to be historic, but it's really. Oh, should be in row though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. Right. I mean, yeah, on the on the route one yeah. or one A. Yeah. Even one. at Pikeles, after yeah. Pikeles. I mean, you it's know? amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I know. I, you know. Actually, if you go down, oh, I guess that's probably in the new ramp. Is, is it Dave Street that goes down? Yeah, yeah. That's that, oh, God. wrong town. <laughs> but I, I think if I, you know, I can't be, if, if I sketch it, of, uh, the negative then I can put hay, it in Illustrator and make it very out. bold, oh, then I don't know where it was, but yeah. it's it's somewhere uh, off of Raleigh. <laughs> But it's a single oh, stack. Yeah. I think all the things we talked about, the, the more you know. I know. I started that, but it didn't really show yeah. up. So yeah. more to come on that. And maybe that's one of the things there that he wants to tell me about mm -hmm. um, the, the image oh, needs yeah. to be A buzzer, shot. huh? Yeah. 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 Only so. because you are traveling mm -hmm. at 20, yeah, 30 miles an hour. Yeah. And you don't have to that detail. It can't be dinky either. It's got to be really bold. Well, people are coming from Bennington. I got a well that I don't want people going to believe like that. that. Two okay. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that defeats the purpose. Okay, that's it. Yes. Have you gone to the town clerk to? I did. I guess. I have. Because I, I, mean, I talked to her today and she said, I don't know. No, I was there yesterday. Okay. I brought my son in and everything. Woo! I have a witness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Go ahead. Yeah. She All right. Sold out the contract. <laughs> Okay, I'll thank you, make everybody. a motion to close the meeting. I would like to make a motion to close the meeting. I'll second. Yay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.